Hello everybody, you are on the RoboForex channel and this is the latest release of the economic and financial news for the week from July 13th to 19th, 2020. Without further ado, here is the outline of this review. G20 Summit – What will financial leaders of the world talk about? Meeting of Banks of Japan, Canada and European Union where local regulators efforts directed. Statistics from China, the UK and the USA and its impact on national currencies. There is a lot of information, so let's get started. The first on our list is the upcoming G20 summit. The finance ministers and central bank governors of the 20 most industrialized regions of the world will meet in Saudi Arabia on July 18th. Usually these events are quite formal. They are meant for politicians to make sure that they are looking in the same directions. This time they might talk about economic forecast and the mechanisms of supporting each other. Leave the thumbs up if you want to know what decision the participants of the group of 20 will make. We continue and our first stop is Japan. The Bank of Japan will meet on Wednesday, July 15th. The interest rate here remains at minus 0.10% per annum and inside the financial system many asset buyback programs are on. Judging by the recent statistics, the economy felt decrease of domestic and foreign demand as a hard blow, and no balance has been reached here yet. The Japanese consumer is very cautious, and perhaps monetary politicians will notice it at last. Typically, the yen hardly reacts to the sessions of the BOJ. Instead, it is susceptible to the demand as a safe haven asset, and markets is an acute need of such instruments right now. Next in line is Canada. The Bank of Canada also meets on July 15th. Here, the interest rate will also remain as it was at 0.25% per annum, and if the rate doesn't change, this meeting will not have a powerful impact on the Canadian dollar. The bank has already applied all the necessary stimulation. We only have to wait for the result. Air traffic between countries is closed, but we can travel at least in the news. We are landing in the European Union. The European Central Bank meets on Thursday, July 16th. The interest rate here is at zero, and the time for changing it has not come yet. The old world has managed to keep the labor market in a relative balance, but what a price the business hard to pay for it, thanks to workplace being presumed. The population looks easier on expenses than in other countries, and for Europe this is a foothold. The more confidently Christian Lagarde, the head of the ECB, comments on the session results, the better for the euro. Now to China and its statistics. First of all, we may pay close attention to the report on the trade balance, the GPD assessment and several macro indicators, from fixed asset investment to industrial production. Any positive signal will be interpreted positively by the market. Global investors count on the Chinese economy's power a lot. They expected the GPD to restore earlier than that of the rivals, while the domestic demand will support global prices for metals and energy carriers. Things are quite logical. China was the first to surrender the pandemics and the first one to overcome it and start restoring. Further down the list are statistics from the UK. Great Britain will issue a flow of statistics on the labor market, which is stabilizing but slowly. Now that the country has almost fought back the coronavirus, it is time to return to Brexit issues. There are only six months of the transition period left. The pound is now more sensitive for Brexit news than the statistics. If you are interested in what is happening with Brexit now, leave a comment, I want a video about Brexit, and we will prepare a special issue on this topic. We are finishing our journey this week in the USA. Things are exciting here. Firstly, the statistics are here as always and this week all eyes will be on the information on inflation, industrial production and retail sales. Moreover, they will start publishing the statistics on the real estate market. We are curious if the demand will stabilize. The stronger the reports, the better for the USD as always. Also, the season of corporate reports had begun and this week it will become fully on. First and foremost, the market will be analyzing the financial reports of banks since risks are very high here. All in all, prepare for the US report season being the worst in the decade or even more. And the last one about the USA. The dollar enjoys demand as a safe haven asset, while everyone is keeping an eye on Trump's actions and new coronavirus cases. 
60,000 cases registered in 24 hours. This is not a joke, but the gravest result ever. And this our journey through this week news of the financial markets ends. But you can already start preparing for the next one. To not miss the takeoff, subscribe for the channel, click on the bell and leave the like for the sake of volatility. Well, see you next time.